أحمده وأصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أوهي إلي أنه استمع نفر من الجن فقالوا إنا سمعنا قرآنا عجبا وقال عز وجل قل يا أيها الكافرون وقال عز وجل قل هو الله أحد وقال عز وجل قل أعوذ برب الفلق وقال عز وجل قل أعوذ برب الناس رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا الطباء وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابا آمين يا رب Because my reciting partner is not here today So regarding the manzil Today I will talk about one word that is repeated in the manzil several times And the word is قُلْ One would have to consider <coughs> that when that surah was revealed, that is called the surah that is the definition of who is Allah. Why did that surah start with Qul? Say, O Prophet, tell them. Why did that surah that tells us about the oneness of Allah start with Qul huwa Allahu ahad? And why does the Qur'an over and over again rather why does the Qur'an over and over again say to our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Qul tell them, let them know, inform them, declare to them What is the relationship between risalah, meaning messengerhood, and tawheed? What is the relationship between these two? So let me start with my first point in my mind. There is the khabar. Khabar is the information. Information is la ilaha illallah. The information is hu allahu ahad. He is Allah and He is absolutely uniquely alone. This is this statement, who Allahu Ahad is what? It's what? Khabar. Khabar means it has information. This information, this khabar, who is the mukhbar of this khabar? Who is the informer of this news? Mukhbar is the one who gives you the khabar. Mukhbar is the one who what? Gives you the khabar, the news, the information. And the information is, who Allahu Ahad. Allah, He is one and alone. And the person who is telling you the informer of that information is known as the Mukhbar. In this case, the Mukhbar is the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala considers the relationship between Risala and Tawheed to be so important that in that surah, that in our aqidah is known as the surah that is the very definition of who is Allah. It starts with the mukhbar before the khabar. Meaning, it starts with telling the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Qul huwa Allahu ahad." O Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you inform them that Allah is one and alone. And so, what is the relationship between the oneness of Allah and prophethood? Is also expressed in this event that I'm going to share with you. An ayah came down to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Unzir ashirataka wal aqrabin. Warn your near ones and your relatives. Warn them, O Prophet. So the Prophet, 
comes out with a question that is so perfect to the situation that is representative of him as a prophet. He gets on the mountain. In the time of the prophet, there used to be a tradition that if there was an attack by, by a foreign power or a foreign agency, somebody would get on the mountain and naked, and then he would call the people based upon being naked, he'd get everyone's attention. Obviously, the prophet didn't do that, but he goes on this mountain and he asks a question. He says, if I told you that there is an army behind us, would you believe me? Now, what is he trying to express here? He's trying to express somewhere here that what if I told you something you cannot see? Will you believe me? Right? And so the Prophet says, if, if I tell you all that there is an army behind us about to attack us, what would you say? They said, you are truthful and we would believe you. And that is when the Prophet said, okay, then I bear witness that there is no divine and there is no power and there is no authority other than Allah and Muhammad is his messenger So the khabar is la ilaha illallah. The khabar is huwa Allahu ahad. The mukhbir, the informer is Muhammad You believe that there is an army behind you if Muhammad tells you. Just as you believe who Allahu Ahad, if he says it. And to make this connection between Risala, messengerhood, and prophethood, and the oneness of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the very surah, that is the very definition of what is Tawheed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes sure to add the word Qul, O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you tell them, that Allahu Allahu Ahad, Allahu Samad. That without the Prophet ﷺ, you cannot reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it means that let's say there is a philosopher, a very intelligent philosopher. He uses his mind. And he comes to the conclusion that there is a God. He comes to the conclusion, there's a God. He says, God is omniscient. God is omnipotent. God is omnipresent. He knows everything. He's ever present. He every, he's, the, in Allah, he's omniscient. He can do everything. He comes to the same conclusion. Such a person, what will happen with him on the day of judgment? depending upon if Islam was presented to him or not, is something that has a question. He may be or may not be saved. For example, Luqman والسلام, he was not a prophet of Allah, but he's mentioned in the Quran as somebody who Allah gave wisdom and he knew the oneness of Allah. But the only true way, the only true way to know Allah, even if you have philosophically reached the conclusion that there is a God, the only way to be sure that your God and the God that is God is the same God as the God that the Muhbar told us about, meaning the Prophet told us about, is only through the Prophet It's the only sure way. Somebody can come to a conclusion that there is a God, but his definition of God may not be the same definition as the definition of Prophet Muhammad's God. And so, let's go back. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ O Prophet wasallam, tell them Allah is one. And Allah is completely independent and He is eternal. This information that the Prophet gave us, wasallam, we believe in it. Do you believe in the mukhbar first or you believe in the khabar first? Let me ask you. You believe in the information first or you believe in the one informing you first? Huh? You, be, you have to believe before you believe in the khabar. 
You have to believe in the mukhbar. Right? So when the Prophet is saying, for example, the Quran has been revealed now, five ayat, Iqra, Bismi Rabbika alladhi khalaq, khalaq al-insana min alaq, Iqra, wa rabbuka al-akram, alladhi allama bil qalam, allama al-insana ma lam ya'lam. Somebody comes to the Prophet and says, what is this? This new words, strange new words you're coming up with. Iqra, Bismi Rabbika alladhi khalaq. What is this? What will the Prophet say? What will he say? It is what? It's a very simple answer. It is what? What did I just recite? Huh? It, it, it's Quran. It's Wahi. Who said? So you have, and whether the person believes it or doesn't believe it, if he believes it, he will first have to believe in the Muhbar. Then believe in what the Muhbar was, what the Khabar of the Muhbar was, or what he was saying. And this is the point that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses by saying, Ul, O Prophet, tell them. Meaning you would not know this information unless you first believe in the Prophet. You must believe in the Prophet before you come, come to Allah. You must believe that this man is truthful. Before you can believe what he's saying. So, you know, these, uh, this is also expressed in Qur'an in another place where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, لَا أُقْسِمُ بِيَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ No, I swear by the Day of Judgment. وَلَا أُقْسِمُ بِالنَّفْسِ اللَّوَّامِ And I swear by that part of yourself that pricks you when you do something wrong. We call it the guilty conscience. Allah says, you don't think you'll be raised back to again? Look at your own guilty conscience that talks to you and tells you when you're doing something wrong. And when the Quran says, لا أقسم بيوم القيامة, I swear there will be a day of judgment. What's the proof in that? What's the proof? They said there will be no day of judgment. The Arabs at the time the Prophet didn't believe in the day of judgment. And Allah says, لا أقسم بيوم القيامة, I swear there will be a day of judgment. What is the proof? The proof is the mukhbar. Who is saying this? Who is saying this information? That there will definitely be a day of judgment. It's Muhammad You have to believe in the mukhbar before you believe in his khabar. You have to believe in the informer before you believe in the information the informer is giving you. And so therefore, the information of La ilaha illallah is, is, is absolutely tied to the informer, who is the Prophet So Allah says, La uqsimu bi yawm al-qiyamah. They were saying there's no day of judgment. The Prophet, Allah says, no, there's definitely a day of judgment. Who's reciting this? Prophet Muhammad. Then the second proof, وَلَا أُقْسِمُ بِالنَّفْسِ اللَّوَّامَ And I swear by yourself that feel makes you feel guilty when you do something wrong. That's the second proof there's a day of judgment. لَا أُقْسِمُ بِيَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ وَلَا أُقْسِمُ بِالنَّفْسِ اللَّوَّامَ أَيَحْسَبُ الْإِنسَانُ أَلَّنَّ نَجْمَعِ غَامَ And does man think we will not bring back his bones? أَيَحْسَبُ الْإِنسَانُ أَلَّنَّ نَجْمَعِ ظَامَ بَلَا قَادِلِينَ عَلَىٰ أَن نُسَوِّيَ بَنَانَ And this is the third proof that we will bring back even your fingerprints. We'll bring back, you, you know, who, who knew at the time of the Prophet the importance of the fingerprints, but Allah mentions it. The physical proof, the internal proof of guilt, and who is saying that there will be a day of judgment. لا أقسم بيوم القيامة ولا أقسم بالنفس اللوامة أيحسب الإنسان أن لن نجمع ظامة بلا قادرين على أن نسوي بنانة More than 70 times Allah says in the Quran what? Obey Allah and His Messenger More than how many times? 18 times Allah only said obey the Messenger without saying obey thee obey Allah and never once did Allah say, only obey me. Never once did Allah say in the Qur'an, what? Obey me. Allah only said in Qur'an, obey me and the messenger. Or He said, obey the messenger. Allah didn't say, because 
uh, those who want to cause a division between Allah and His Messenger. Allah doesn't want a division between Allah and His Messenger. So when He is talking about Himself, He starts with Qul, O Prophet, you say this. You inform them. And that is the importance of Qul. And Qul is a command. O Prophet, you must say this. You must declare this. You must inform of the, them of this. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. That Tawheed that comes from the Prophet is real Tawheed. That Tawheed that does not come from the Prophet is not real Tawheed. Could be any philosopher, any thinker, any intellectual who comes to some conclusion of God is not that God that the God of which Muhammad informed us in its truest sense. Even though, of course, it's in our fitrah, it's in our human nature to want God and to reach God. That's there. But in its truest sense can only come through Prophets. Another proof of that is what? When Ibrahim والسلام, was passing away, he asked his children, uh, uh, Allah, uh, Ibrahim والسلام, said to his children, Okay, ma min ba'di. who will you worship after me? They said, We will worship your Lord. Whose Lord? Your Lord, meaning Ibrahim's Lord, right? نعبد إلهك وإله آبائك إبراهيم وإسماعيل وإسحاق. Sorry, this was Yaqub asking his children. We'll worship your Lord and the, your our grandfather's Lord and Ismail's Lord. نعبد إلهك وإله إبراهيم وإسماعيل وإسحاق. Yes. Okay. So now. The قُلْ The relationship between the oneness of Allah and the relationship between Risala is that who is that person to whom the windows of the unseen are opened? The windows of the unseen are opened. It is prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The windows of the unseen are open. Now this is very important and I'll tell you why and I'll end on this point. No, maybe I'll leave that. Or okay, let me let me mention this very uh, quickly. One of the things that we have a hard time with in the modern times is to accept that normal human beings. I'm not talking about prophets. I'm not talking about prophets. I'm talking about normal what human beings before i talk about this let me mention one or two more points when abu bakr this is a sahih hadith this hadith is what sahih it's in bukhari it's in muslim it's in many books of hadith what happened abu bakr saw some of the animals bowing down to the prophet in fact, here's a question. What was something animals were allowed to do to the Prophet? Or non-humans were allowed to do to the Prophet, the humans were not allowed to do to the Prophet? What was something that non-humans were allowed to do to the Prophet, that humans were not allowed to do to the Prophet? Do you know what that is? Sajda. Bowing down. So when Abu Bakr saw the camels bowing down to the Prophet, what did Abu Bakr say in the famous narration? O Prophet of Allah, who says this? Abu Bakr says this. To who? He says it to the Prophet. He says, Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr says to the Prophet, O Prophet of Allah, we are more deserving of doing sajda to you, bowing down to you, than these animals. Hadith is sahih. We are more beauty bound to do sajda to you than these animals and the Prophet said no but what am I trying to share with you here what I'm trying to share with you here is the importance of prophethood the greatness of prophethood what we have done in the modern times we've made prophets like other human beings we can be superhuman beings but the prophets are super superhuman beings 
This is a very important point that goes against the sensitivities of the modern age. And I'll tell you why. The Prophet ﷺ, you know, one interesting comparison I'd like to draw to your attention is the greatest, when we think of the greatest miracle or the Prophet that did the greatest miracle, who is normally the Prophet that comes to mind when we talk about miracles? Whose life is a miracle, his birth is a miracle, his death is a miracle, his coming back will be a miracle. Who is that Prophet? Isa alayhi Why? Because he made the dead come to life. I suggest that if you make a dead man come to life, he had the faculties of consciousness. He had the what? Faculties of consciousness. He had the faculties of consciousness. So when he came back alive, he had consciousness. But the miracles given to the Prophet were such that those things that had no consciousness, they had never even in their, they never had the capacity of consciousness gained consciousness. For example, the tree that was crying when the Prophet was giving khutbah. For example, the rocks that used to give salams to the Prophet before he was a Prophet. And the Prophet said, even today I know those rocks in Mecca that used to give me salams before I was a Prophet. Things that never had consciousness gained consciousness. Why am I saying this to you? I'm saying this to you that it is not a big deal if the prophets of Allah do miracles and they have that fadl, they have that karam, they have that ability from Allah to perform miracles is not a big deal because Allah is real. But it is equally not a big deal if normal human beings perform, perform what? Miracles. Or if they see miracles. The reason we don't see miracles is we don't believe in miracles. And one of the effects of the modern age upon humanity is the very pessimism of the fact that human beings are not important. The Quran tells us we are Allah's greatest creation. And we have the ability to do super things. Just as the prophets of Allah had the ability to do super. So for example, I'll give you an example. I did a, a video in which I talked about the dog of the Ashabul Kahf. You know the dog of the people of the cave? So I talked about that. And I talked about why Allah mentioned this dog more than anything else in the surah. You know this? Allah mentioned the dog. Ibn Allah said, and they were three, and the fourth was what? The dog. Or they said they were? Khamsatun was sadisuhum. Now, why Allah has to mention their dogs? Right? And they were saying there were seven, and the eighth is the? You could have just mentioned it one time. For example, Allah could have said, they said they were three, and the fourth was the dog, and others said they were five, and others said they were what? Seven. Why mention the dog every time? What is so special about this dog? So, I mentioned a certain narration because the Quran calls this event of the Ashabul Kahf, what? Allah calls this event of, of the Ashabul Kahf an event that was very strange, a very strange event. And Allah mentions the dog more than anything else in the entire surah. So what's so special about this dog? So there's a narration that there was this dog. And he stood up on his two legs. And they were trying to pelt him to go away because they felt if he barked, he would give away their place of hiding. So they were trying to what? Stone him. Stone the dog, but the dog persisted. He didn't go. And after they persisted and persisted and persisted of throwing, he stood up on his two legs and he raised his uh, upper legs like we do in dua. This is the literal words of Imam Qurtubi's uh, tafsir. Literal words. He, he put up and he said that I love those who Allah loves. And I'm he, I want you to go to sleep and rest and I'll be your guard dog. Now, when I did this video, someone asked me, do you really believe, Shaykh Umar, that these dog, this dog talked? 
Do you really what? Believe that this dog talked. I am not talking about the narration being weak or authentic. I'm talking about our modern sensitivities. We find it very hard in our modern sensitivities to believe in miracles. And so when we tell stories of the past scholars like Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal and others who performed miracles, our modern sensitivities don't want to hear about. They, 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 because it doesn't fit the, the, the modern sensibilities, you can say. And so it's very important to realize that we have lowered our own capacity and we have lowered our own rank. And because we have lowered our rank, we've lowered the messenger's rank as a result. And because we've lowered the messenger's rank, oh yeah, he can do some miracles, but he wasn't that special. And I'm nothing anyway. Because the modern world and the modern philosophers, everyone from uh, Descartes to Nietzsche, every single one of them were nothing but pessimistics. Freud was a pessimistic person. Nietzsche was a pessimistic. There was one philosopher I was just reading the other day. You know what he said about life? He said that there's nothing good about human life. The best thing I can find about human life is music. That's the best thing I can find about human life, is music. Otherwise, it's, it's, it's all meaningless life. So, Because man has brought himself down, he has brought prophethood down, and he's brought the mercy of Allah down, and the rank of everything has been thrown out. Whereas in the view of the Qur'an, and also in the light of many religions, particularly Christianity, man is born with the original sin. You're a sinner. To begin with, whereas in Islam you're born without sin. And ruh, the ruh of man, the spirit of man, the soul of man, is supposed to be Allah's greatest creation. I know I'm going too long, but what am I coming to? That prophets of Allah are special. And the friends of Allah are special. And miracles of Allah by the prophets and miracles of Allah by the friends of Allah are very possible. And they will happen, and they do happen. And so when you hear about a story that, oh, there was a, 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 a friend of Allah and he was flying in the air. People of modern sensibilities be like, I don't need these fairy tales. These are fairy tales or not, is not what I'm talking about. But when you hear about somebody flying, the very fact that you have a problem with it is the problem. Whether it's a true story or not is a different issue. So, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدُ Say, O Muhammad wasallam, You are the greatest of human beings and my greatest creation. And human beings are my greatest creation. You inform them that who I am. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدُ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدْ لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُلَدْ So, قُلْ is that command to the Prophet that he is the informer of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anyway, there's so much to this subject, but I'll stop now. أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم النساء المسلمين والمسلمات I think Brother Zahir is coming. <laughs> <laughs> Sins of life spent in poem and in servility, for they have led me to things of horrible aftermath akin to lives that decreed by them for the butchery.
seed of youth in both cases and got nothing but sins and did regret. Oh, what misery! Oh, what a loss for my soul! The awful deal that it made not buying faith with this world, not even browsing to see Mola and Sawdi was a Amy, whoever sells of his future for his present will come to see the loss in his cell and future delivery. Whoever sells of his future for his present will come to see the loss in his cell and future delivery. Singing praises of him, I'll find him to be the most committed to saving me, Mola singing praises of him. I found him to be the most committed to saving me the riches from him. Will not neglect this poor dusty hand. Indeed the rain causes even hills to be flowery. I saw no bloom of the lower world. The hands of Zuhair had picked head for Having presented, had him with flattery, Mawla Yassalli wa sallim da'iman Abadan ala nabi i wa ahli Mawla Yassalli wa sallim da'iman Abadan ala nabi i wa ahli bayti kublihimi Oh my beloved, I beg of you in life and in that to wrap your Buddha of special care and love over me, most noble of all creation. What refuge do I have of you at the coming of the global emergency? Oh, messenger of Allah, your rank won't shrink from me when the generous manifests his punishing. Quality, yes, from your grace is indeed the world as well as it's made. And of your knowledge, the tablet and the pen of decree, Mawlaya, Salli wa Sallim Da'iman, Abadan ala Abi, Bika khayri al-khalqi kulihimi, 
oh so despair Not because of a mistake that is grave Enormities are like slips compared to his Clemency, ya Rabbi bil Mustafa dalik ma qa Sidana wa filana Ma ma qa ya wasiyan Karami and hopefully Mercy from my Lord when he Gives it, I will come according to sinfulness in its quantity, my Lord, and make not my hope a hope that is overturned with you, and make my expectance with no deficiency. Mawlaya, salli wa sallim da'iman, abadan ala habibika khayr al-khalqi kulihi mi be kind to your slave in both the boats for his fort it to whenever terrors call out to it will turn tell and flee let clouds of blessing from you unending rain down upon the prophet with pouring rain so heavily steadily for longer than willow branches by the east wind are slayed and camel drivers Excite the camels with melody, the pleasure with Abu Bakr, the greatest of company. Then Omar, bearer of truth, and Dun Uthman, and Ali, the family, and companions, and all the followers, the people, the purity, and patience, and piety, my Lord, by the chosen one, make our hopes come to be and pardon us what has gone over vast in generosity and please my God do forgive all the Muslims by what they all recite at the holy mosque and the sanctity especially the composer and the translator and all the reciters with passion and in serity by the prestige of him who the goodly land in his home whose very name is an oath of greatest immensity this is the Buddha of the selected one now complete and praise Allah at the start and finish eternally the number of Verses in it is 160 or more relieved by them. Our woes, O oh, vast and generosity, Ya Rabbi bil Mustafa Balik Maqa, Sidana wa Filana, Mama Daya wa Sihan, Karami Ya Rabbi bil Mustafa Balik Maqa, Sidana wa Filana, Mama Daya كرامي يا ربي بالمصطفى بلغ مقاصدنا واغفر لنا ما مضى يا واسع كرامي مولاي صلي وسلم دائما ابدا على ابي بك خير الخلق كلهم الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله